Uh, joining me now are uh, uh, two commentators from either side of the uh, political divide. They are Shailene Harley de Bond for the Republicans and uh, Robert Wiener uh, for the Democrats. So, Shirley, what do you make of it so far? Well, so far, I think um, we have most of what we expected. I mean, we've been talking about this now for several weeks, um, projected, you know, 55 to 60 seats in the House. That's probably yeah. where we're going to be by the end of the evening, if not tomorrow morning. And then I believe the Senate is, again, right where we are. The looking, toss looking a little confused, a lot of toss-ups. Yeah, well, of course, and we yeah. expected that. You know, we knew that there were about five to six toss-ups, and there's still toss-ups right I, now. I've got to say to you, I mean, it looks like in the House you're going to get past that target of... Uh, uh, 54, uh, which, Newt, which Newt yeah. Gingrich had. Now, of course, we know what happened there. Uh, the uh, Republican Party perhaps overreached itself in the House, and of course, um, Bill Clinton was re elected. Uh, is it going to be different this time around? Oh, absolutely. I think this is why you, you learn from your mistakes. Um, we know that many Americans feel that the Democratic Party has overreached these past two years, and this is what you have now in 2010. So um, Republicans have, a, you know, we're going to learn from our past mistakes and hopefully Democrats are going to learn from their past mistakes. Uh, Robert Wiener, uh, Andrew Wilson back in London making the point that, you know, the biggest uh, Democratic winner so far, uh, Joe Manchin, actually attacking uh, the president. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're glad that Joe Manchin and also uh, Senator to be Coons and uh, Mr. Blumenthal in Connecticut and Sestak uh, in Pennsylvania and Janulius uh, in Illinois. It really does look like well, they're we're going to. Yeah, some we, of those. But yeah. those are where we're ahead, and it's looking very, very good. And uh, so the projections in the Senate, I'd say the Republicans got about half of what they wanted, and uh, we got less than what we wanted because we wanted both houses. But at least it looks like we're going to keep the Senate. But I'll tell you something, uh, the Republicans have not learned their lesson when Senator Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate, says their number one objective is to stop Barack Obama from being president again. And it had nothing to do with issues of housing and health care and uh, the wars that are going on. Then they made a big mistake and they have already uh, begun to you know, overreach. The Wall Street Journal had this very interesting poll um, a couple days ago. And there are two crucial numbers, 46 and 48, it was 46 percent of Americans feel that um, the health care bill was not needed. 48 percent feel that they would prefer to elect someone with less than 10 years of congressional experience. So in one aspect, you feel that Americans really believe that we should not have done health care. And again, this belief well, that Democrats I, I and the president have overreached. Yeah. And then 48 percent, it's this whole anti-incumbency, well, okay. which, which okay. um, does quickly. not benefit the party in power. You told us to have a fun debate, so we're yeah. going to, Sherilyn. Uh, the health the, the bill is, yes, 50-50 opposed and supported. That's about what the American people believe. I don't but, think it's but, better than 50-50. But, excuse me, but half of that 50 is 25% well, that think it didn't go far enough with a Medicare buy-in and also public option. Okay. People think it didn't do All enough. Right. Well, I would love to explain so why it's really, Republicans it's really are doing so well okay, in this but election. But we have a financial services bill that didn't even okay. touch <laughs> Freddie Mac and Fannie yeah. Mae. You have a health care bill, which no <laughs> one seems to understand, and certainly uh, a good portion of the okay. people voting well, on it just, never even read it. Let's just stick with health care so. for tonight because <laughs> right. Eric Cantor, uh, who looks like he's going to be the number two in the House of Representatives, has said that the new Republican majority will try and repeal the health care bill. Uh, do you well, think that's repealing is just not realistic. Well, repealing is not realistic. Well, I, I, well, I think what they'd like the to do, I think what they'd like to do is probably get people on record as repealing, but an actual, the way it works, the process in Washington, is that what they will do is just not simply fund it. Because again, yeah. President Obama may be the president, but he doesn't have a vote in Congress. I last time I checked. I want to see the Republicans try to repeal health care, meaning repealing pre-existing conditions, health care for children, uh, no lifetime cap if you get sick. Those are the things the American people wanted. And if they try to repeal those, plus, by the way, Sherilyn, 160 Republican amendments, including tax cuts for small business, are in the health bill. That's a lot of rhetoric. They will not repeal the health bill. Does Senator Obama, does, does President Obama, sorry, does he nonetheless need to change course, do you think, now? Well, David Axelrod told us yesterday, we had a meeting of all the Democratic uh, consultants, and to be candid, it was a little bit, and I made the joke of it was like uh, 
being uh, in a gathering the day before you pull the plug on your mother. So we, we, we knew a little bit what was coming down. But he also said that if the Republicans do uh, gain substantially in Congress, they know they can't reach as broadly or as swiftly as they've done. They're willing to compromise. But I made the point to David, and I made it in the meeting, that we have compromised. He's had meeting after meeting after meeting. Actually, he's went, that's excuse not me, true. Excuse me. And he's gone, I'm going to finish my point, yeah, Adam. We'll come back he's gone right. to their caucuses twice. They've come to the White House to the meetings. We gave them 160, I must say that is just we, not we gave them 160 amendments in the okay. in the bill, and yet they did not compromise. Not one Republican okay. vote for the health bill. Actually, so actually, actually, they did try to compromise. The Republicans did say asked he for medical. Well, we haven't seen it because Boehner yeah, look. had called. <laughs> he had called President. He had sent letters to President Obama, and Ooh. President Obama refused to meet with them. And uh -huh. let me add something about health care. All those times the he was over there, I guess those weren't meetings. asked for medical malpractice. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the uh, you know, Republicans had asked for medical malpractice. There was one thing that they wanted in the health care bill. And of course, you know why the Democrats didn't want it? Because the Democrats have trial lawyers in their back pocket. And the trial lawyers, of course, would not benefit from it. I medical agree with Sherilyn on tort reform and medical malpractice. And yeah. I made the point on federal news radio that if the Democrats right. had given a little okay. bit, and you know what? President Obama did say that he wanted to compromise a little bit and do some malpractice. And the Democrats in Congress made a big mistake by not doing some medical I, malpractice. I mean, I have I to agree say, just, 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 just listening to you, it, it does suggest suggest uh, that the next two years are going to be uh, pretty much one of uh, legislative uh, paralysis uh, in Washington. I, I mean, we don't know that. I mean, we can all make these sorts of conjectures and whatnot. I think we need to see what it looks like at the end of the evening. We also need to see what type of people are elected in Congress. I mean, you know, they don't work. They don't work for the two of us. They have their constituents yes. and their constituents spoke very loudly. They said what they wanted. We know they weren't happy with financial services reorganization. We know many constituents weren't happy with health care. This is who these people represent. So they need to listen to their constituents, not me. Thank you both very much. We're going to have uh, to leave it there. The next uh, tranche of states we're going to get are those uh, uh, out west. Uh, it be interesting to see uh, how this battle is developing. But it appears uh, Republicans uh, have been given uh, control of the House by all the uh, analysts. Uh, Senate uh, uh, is still a bit of a battle and they may well uh, fall just short of the 10 gains they need there. Back to you. Indeed.